Recently, I found my old 10-year-old laptop lying around the house. At first, I felt a wave of nostalgia, but then I thought, what if I turn it on and upgrade it until I can run something? That idea seemed fun, and on the other hand, it could make for a really interesting piece of content. So I decided to do it. Today, I'll upgrade it as much as my budget allows, no matter how much I end up spending, and optimize it to the max to see what I can actually run on it. Well, let's begin. To make this upgrade far more interesting, let's figure out the backstory behind it. Most people on this channel already know that I had a laptop after my old Wig PC, and that laptop was gifted by my parents during my student years. I struggled to even work on that PC, not to mention play games. But of course, I was too shy to ask them for a new laptop, because I thought, it was expensive at the time, but I should have asked. They were already planning to give me one, this time without telling me. They probably thought all laptops were the same, so they bought me this beast. You know, the kind of beast that dies from opening chrome. Honestly, not even a rat, maybe a cockroach. But still, I thanked them, I didn't want to disappoint them, and I gotta say, I'm so grateful they gave me this weak little laptop, because it made me stronger. I dove into the tech world just trying to make this thing better. I learned to edit on it, and watched a ton of Let's Plays dreaming about a real gaming setup. At the time, I didn't even realize that editing needed a powerful machine. I just kept pushing and being upset, until I discovered Adobe After Effects. That's when I truly realized how weak the laptop was, and it made me even more depressed. It was really weak. But to be clear, let's look at its specs and see what we can actually upgrade. I clicked the power button and, man, it was too slow. I couldn't believe how patient I used to be. Thousand years later. It finally booted up and I saw my old anime wallpaper. Yep, yeah, full on anime girl desktop. Don't judge, I stopped watching anime like two years ago, but the nostalgia still hit me hard. No, I'm not changing the wallpaper. It would probably crush just trying to open settings. We'll probably remove the storage completely. I can smell the HDD already. But I checked the start menu and found all the tools I used for making YouTube content back in the day. Editing apps, screen recorders, and only one one game. Minecraft. But even that wouldn't launch. That's how ancient this laptop is. Here's the full spec sheet of Doom. AMD A8 7410 CPU with Radeon R5 integrated graphics, 8GB DDR3L RAM, 1600MHz, 1TB HDD, no discrete GPU unfortunately. Just so you know, I don't even know this processor, and I doubt AMD remembers designing it. So yeah, a lot needs to be upgraded. But don't forget the display. When I opened it, well, it was bad. First, it's a TN panel, meaning the colors shift when you look from the side. Second, it's not even full HD, just 1366 by 768 at 60Hz. So yeah, the situation is pretty bad. Also, ignore the Russian interface and keyboard. Russian used to be my second language, but now English has taken the spot. Okay, now we understand the problem with the laptop. The problem is the laptop. I know what needs fixing. But to be serious, I already ordered a few things, which I'll show you later. But before that, let's open it up and see what's going on inside. First of all, look at how dirty it is. Oh my god, tons of scratches on the chassis. I don't know if we can fix this today. But first, the important thing is opening its back. Let's do it. But before that, be careful when opening old laptops, especially ones with plastic bodies. They can crack so easily. Anyway, I opened it up and to my surprise, it was actually clean inside. Not what I expected after 10 years of sitting around untouched. Here are the GPU and CPU. We can't change them unfortunately, but what we can change are these two RAM sticks. 4GB each from Samsung, too slow unfortunately, no wonder it lagged so hard back then. By the way, when I first turned on this laptop, it didn't boot, because the RAM contacts had oxidized. Had to rub them with an eraser like in the good old days, worked like a charm. Another thing we have is the HDD. Toshiba 5200 RPM. That's the main reason for the lag and slow desktop performance. You didn't see that because of the edit, but in reality I sat there for 4 to 5 hours just to film some frames for the video. Okay, as you can see here, we can't change the much except the RAM and HDD, cleaning it, replacing the thermal paste, and one more thing I'll tell you a bit later. But now, let's see what I bought after a bit of research. I bought two sticks of 8GB RAM, but the speed is still DDDR3L, 1600MHz, and the brand is G-Skill. Speed is the same because the motherboard and processor don't support anything faster. At least I improved the size to 16GB. Now multitasking is much easier. Next, I tossed that HDD in the bin and installed a 500GB Samsung SATA SSD. No M2 slot on the motherboard, unfortunately. 
and why 500 gigabyte? Simple. I'm giving this laptop to my sister. She doesn't game or edit, just documents, slides, maybe some chat GPT. So yeah, 500 is perfect. Swapping it in was super easy. Just popped it into the old HDD slot. After that, I cleaned the dust, replaced the thermal paste on CPU and GPU, and closed it up. Oh, and guess what? My phone died halfway through filming the thermal paste part. I seriously don't know how people shoot big projects without going crazy. Probably because they use actual cameras. Might be time for me to do that too, because the iPhone 15 is definitely not for filming this long. Now onto the display. Remember that TN panel with 1366 resolution and a glossy finish? Yeah, it was beginning to be replaced. Sunlight reflections made it unusable outdoors. So I popped off the display frame using a random bank card, life hack, checked the model number and thankfully it was a standard 15.6 panel. Ordered a new one with IPS full HD matte coating and once it arrived I slipped it in, removed the screen protector, best feeling ever, and put the frame back. Looks amazing now. Before booting it up, I gave the whole laptop a deep clean using some glass wipes and cleaning solution. Don't ask what brand. Just trust me, it looks way better now. Scratches are still there, but hey, we did what we could. Oh, and I almost forgot. The battery didn't work at all. Zero charge. So I replaced it too, because let's be honest, a laptop without a battery is just a bad desktop. So this is what the laptop looks like now. It's crazy. After the upgrade, I have to clean this up entirely. I think we changed and upgraded everything we could. CPU can change, GPU also can't, but at least we upgraded from 8GB to 16GB RAM, replaced the slow HDD with a fast SSD, and swapped out the TN glossy low res display for a full HD IPS matte screen. The total cost of the upgrade around $160. Let's test it and see if it was worth it. Alright, let's talk about the OS real quick. Obviously, I slapped in a brand new SSD, so I went ahead and installed a fresh copy of Windows. But here's the catch. This laptop can't run Windows 11. Yeah, so I had to go with Windows 10. And since Microsoft is ending support for Windows 10 in just a couple of months, I'm kinda torn. Should I install Linux or toss this laptop into the recycling bin? Anyway, let's check boot times. Left side before the upgrade. Right side after the upgrade. Boom, night and day difference. Now it boots super fast, opens apps smoothly, runs a browser without chalking, and even handles some light Photoshop work. Honestly, if you forget it's running Windows, it feels like a totally usable machine now. The screen upgrade also made a big difference. We're finally on full HD and that glossy panel, gone. I used to hate those annoying reflections from sunlight or even lamp. Now with the matte display, it just looks cleaner. More expensive, I guess. I can't describe it, it just feels right. However, there's disappointment. My god tells me the panel isn't actually IPS. I've used IPS displays for years and trust me, this one is different. Could be a TN or a VA panel pretending to be IPS. When I bought it, it was labeled as IPS. But yeah, scammed again, not surprised. Anyway, whatever, I'm not keeping this laptop for myself, so it's fine. Let's move on to the battery. I got a new one for about $18 and it finally powers on without being plugged in, which is already a win. But battery life? Awful. It lasts maybe 2-3 hours just sitting idle on the desktop. Imagine how fast it would drain if I actually worked on it. Anyway, let's talk about the next test. Now I originally planned to skip testing games because this laptop clearly wasn't built for that. But I know some of you won't believe me unless I show you. So I did it. I ran a few games just to see what happens. And let me tell you, game testing is a nightmare. You have to download massive game files, adjust all the settings, and then record the gameplay all in a potato laptop. That's pain. Doesn't matter how fast your internet is, modern games take forever to install. Alright, so I downloaded a few games to see what this potato can handle. First up, CS2. I launched it and it was already lagging in the menu. Yeah, not even in game yet. And when I tried to soften the blow by launching a training A map, 4 FPS, peak performance right there. 
and during holidays maybe 5. Honestly, it wasn't even a game, it was a powerpoint presentation. Then I thought, okay, maybe Minecraft will save the day. Spoiler, it didn't. Total disaster. That's when reality hit. No point even trying other games. But it brought back memories, like how I used to play Far Cry 3 on the lowest settings just to squeeze out 25 FPS. I didn't care back then. And now, I look back and ask myself, bro, how did you even survive that? Somehow, I finished that game and hit Man Absolution 2. GTA 5, yeah, ran at 15-20 FPS, unplayable. And CSGO, it liked so badly I installed it, instantly. And that game isn't even as demanding as CS2 now. So yeah, the final boss of the entire upgrade journey is the CPU and the motherboard. No matter what you upgrade, the real bottleneck is the laptop itself. That's why I'm seriously considering pulling out the RAM, SSD and screen, selling them and tossing the rest into the trash. But here's what I actually plan to do. After all those tests, I think it's clear. This laptop sucks. Even in simple stuff like Minecraft. I really rolled the unluckiest dice when I got AMD instead of Intel back when Intel was crushing it. That said, for basic stuff like typing docs or doing presentations, it's fine. Not for me though. Even the best RAM and SSD can't save a weak processor. But hey, I won't throw it out just yet. I'll let my sister use it. She doesn't really need a laptop that often. Mostly uses it for schoolwork and slides. For that, it'll do. But come on, the fact that it can't even run Windows 11 is crazy. Who do we blame here? Microsoft or this cursed motherboard? Anyway, it boots in like 15 seconds now, no lag, and it's actually usable for light multitasking. I can finally open browser with multiple tabs, unlike before, when even opening one tab felt like launching a rocket. So yeah, if you enjoyed this upgrade project, let me know in the comments. And hit that subscribe button to help me reach 100k subscribers. I know it's still far off, but I believe we'll get there. Thanks for watching and take care.